I was in third grade at St. Mary's parochial school the first time that God called me. Father Frank, our pastor, announced to everyone in the cafeteria that he was reassigned. Everyone clapped for Father Frank and then returned to conversation. However, I watched intently as Father Frank walked out of the cafeteria and I heard God say to me, Luke, I want you to be a priest someday. I remember feeling joy and peace in hearing this. In many ways, I began to embrace the Mass in a similar way as a youngster falls in love with the local or professional sports team that everyone loves. Growing up in St. Mary's helped me to appreciate Catholicism. God continued to call me through elementary, middle, and high school with whispers of encouragement. One of the most striking moments for me came in high school with two friends at a campfire. We asked each other what we wanted to be when we grew up. By this point, the fire had burned itself down and only the coals remained, covered in ashes. I shared that I felt God may be calling me to be a priest. These two friends affirmed this in me and like a breath upon the coals of an old fire, my heart reignited. I sensed the same joy and peace that I had felt in third grade when I experienced God breathing the vocation of the priesthood upon my heart. I received a letter from my mom during an Elk County Catholic High School retreat. One line from her letter reignited my heart with great intensity. My mom wrote, whether you one day become a father or a father, you will continue to guide and embrace the lives of others. I remember exactly where I was sitting when I read that letter. This letter came at a good time, for it was shortly after I had knee surgery, which significantly limited me, but graciously opened up my heart. Years later, I would experience greater physical suffering and spiritual growth. Then I went to St. Vincent College, where one story stands above them all. In my junior year, I had a priest named Father Philip as a statistics teacher. One day I met him in his office to discuss his course, and then I opened up that I was feeling called to be a priest. Father Philip also shared his vocation story with me, and he gave me the advice to go live. In other words, he meant that God will continue to call me, and I should go forth in confidence and in peace. So I went and I lived. I felt called to teach, and after St. Vincent, I taught for two years in the Dubois Area School District as an elementary teacher. I love teaching. And then an illness hit me around the age of 24 in my second year of teaching. I would come to find out that I had Lyme disease. I saw numerous doctors, but received no answers. The pain only amplified by the week. For the next 12 months, I don't remember a moment in which I was not in pain. I went from pitching in a state championship baseball game at the age of 16 to being 24 years old and unable to pitch in a kickball game at recess with elementary students. I remember one night I broke down into tears before my dad and shared with him that this undiagnosed illness was really taking its toll on me. My dad hugged me and said to me, son, if I could take your pain, I would. It was my dad who put the medical puzzle together and encouraged me to be tested for Lyme disease. Once the illness was diagnosed, I slowly healed. However, this healing process was not easy. Spiritually, I experienced much healing through the suffering. And I think God used Lyme disease to slow my life down in a culture where those in their mid-twenties were living very quickly. The thought of married life came into my heart during the early years of teaching. I went on a few dates, and in many ways, God spoke to me through these experiences that married life was not what he was calling me to. The school district had to furlough teachers at the end of my second year. I remember being called into a meeting room with administration and human resources. They respectfully shared with me that my job had unfortunately come to an end. As I walked out of the room, I remember simply being grateful that my health was returning. The physical suffering I went through gave me a different perspective, a spiritual perspective. On the walk back to my classroom, 
the whisper of priesthood returned. But this time it appeared louder and clearer. Or maybe God had prepared me to hear better. The coals in my heart reignited and burned away any unemployment concerns that I may have had. At this time, my brother Ben was in seminary, and through him I encountered the Diocese of Erie, the seminarians and the priests of the seminary. However, I still was not ready to enter. It takes courage to enter the seminary, and I was still in need of God's support to help me with this. After being furloughed from the Dubois Area School District, I was hired at Elk County Catholic to teach middle school theology. This was a great blessing for me. During this time, I was 25 years old and knew that I needed spiritual direction to help me to discern the seminary. My spiritual director helped me to see that God was calling me to seminary. I realized also that the whispers from God were becoming louder and the many breaths upon the coals of my heart needed to be given more time and attention. I remember the moment I called the vocations director. I was driving on the Reynoldsville Falls Creek Road after a spiritual direction meeting, a road I had driven hundreds of times as an elementary teacher. As I called the vocations director, I remember hearing the sound of each ring and I thought to myself, I hope it goes to voicemail. Again, it takes courage to enter the seminary. Once I was accepted, I began to share with others. When I shared with my grandpa George that I was going to enter the seminary, he cried. His tears in some beautiful way ignited the coals of my heart and still do. In the summer of 2018, just a few days before going to St. Mark's Seminary in Erie, I received an unexpected call from the Human Resources Director of the Dubois Area School District. He shared with me that a full-time teaching job was available. I remember looking out from my family's home at the cross that was at the top of the St. Joseph's Convent. I then said to the Human Resources Director, I greatly appreciate you calling me. However, I'm going to seminary to discern. I feel that God is calling me to be a priest. My vocation story is one in which God whispered over time and breathed the vocation of priesthood upon the coals of my heart. The Lord ignited the flame through experiences and often through others. My rector at St. Mary's Seminary in Baltimore, Father Brown, began each year with, it takes courage to enter the seminary. In hindsight, God was calling me early on, but I needed his help in giving me this courage. I will be ordained a priest by Bishop Persico on Friday, May 24th at 7 p.m. at St. Peter's Cathedral in downtown Erie, Pennsylvania. What I enjoy most about ordinations is that they are about God, not the person being ordained. A powerful line is when the bishop says, May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. God began the good work in me in third grade when he first called me, and may he bring it to fulfillment. When I was ordained a deacon, Bishop Persico told me in his homily, Give God's people reason to hope. I am convinced that God desires to help each of us live out our vocations, and this has given me hope. Another powerful phrase in the ordination is when the bishop says, relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Those words are very uplifting to me. Relying on the help of the Lord must be every moment of every day. I ask that you pray for every man who is feeling the call to the priesthood, particularly that these men may have more trust in God's help and be given an increase in courage. I ask that you pray for me, especially when the bishop asks me, Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? My answer will be, I do, with the help of God.